Hokkai. Um, yeah, just some basic uses, really. Uh, nothing crazy. Just, just how it works. Um, standard door toggle, styly. Um, using one of these, the old latch from the last video. Uh, nor latch. So this is your input, obviously goes through here, and then this is uh, your output that goes down here. Now I've wired that slightly differently, um, just to show how you can actually power the door from underneath um, using this one inverter, which then goes into uh, another block here with the torch on the top. So it keeps the signal the same. You see the torch is off, the output's off, and the inverter's on in the middle. Um, so that means if I press this, like that, uh, the torch is now on. Um, then there's this delay line, which means when you come through the door, you can close the door like that because it resets the latch. Uh, it's not particularly desirable for this application, but uh, it can be used. Probably slightly more desirable is something a bit like this, uh, which is a mono stable circuit version of the last one we just looked at. So what happens is instead of having that manual reset we have a time delay reset. So you press the button and then it goes through those delays to the reset there and it resets the uh, the latch and closes the door. So you can open it, run through and then it will close automatically behind you. Um, again these these are probably better for uh, things like hidden doors. Uh, I can obviously just do that. Um, but yeah, I'm just giving an example really uh, of how you'd use them. Probably the most desirable uh, for something like that is a, is a toggle, a bit like this. Uh, if it was actually wired up, that would really help the situation. Hokkaim, uh, yeah, so one button on and off. Bit like that. Bit like that. Uh, it does mean that you can wire in the input from both sides of the door, which is much better. Which means you can close and open the door from both sides of the uh, the circuit, and then you can actually have as many inputs as you want. I mean, it could almost go on forever. I don't know why, but um, yeah. So that's probably more desirable circuit for something like that really. So that's your sort of latches and toggles. It's a simple way to use them. Right, um, just going to show you what I mean with a hidden door. Um, so you've got a toggle which opens the door there, uh, which is again this, this T flip flop uh, with the pistons. I uh, really like this design, it's very compact, I forgot to mention that before, it's actually very small for a, a flip-flop, they're normally huge. Uh, in comparison to something like a latch over there on an AND gate, they're, they're normally very big, but since pistons have been introduced, this is great, so uh, awesome. Um, yeah, so as you can see there, you can toggle the state of the secret door, basically. Um, the other thing you can do obviously like we said before wire in another input so you can actually close the uh, door from the inside and open it from the inside which is obviously useful um, so yeah that, that's just just an example I wanted to give really combining logic gates um, worth a squirt so I'll show you how to do that. A little bit more advanced, this is when circuits start getting big and multi-function and uh, actually interesting. So we've got the same circuit here, toggle into the secret door circuit and then we've added some extra bits. So we've got our AND gate added at the front now, uh, an inverter, not gate, uh, latch and the AND gate, this final button here which is going to open that door but only once we've gone through the sequence. So, now what happens is our old button no longer works to toggle 
the uh, the secret door. So you, you have to have this enabler on, which lets the AND gate complete and that opens the door. So anybody knows what an AND gate is or watched the previous video knows that both torches on the top have to be off for the output to come through here, uh, or just to just to output at all. So I can still toggle now with the enabler on, um, but if the enabler's off, I can't do anything. Um, so yeah, so this part of the circuit that that goes into is exactly the same as it was before, uh, including this, which does still does the same thing, uh, opens and closes. But now we have this branch here, which goes up into this latch and this AND gate. What the latch has done is obviously just remember that information and output it into this AND gate, which is exactly the same as the first one, and this output now is acting much like the lever did which means this button will now work for the door um, which it wouldn't have before so what this has done is just made the circuit into a multi-function circuit which means you can do more than one thing with one circuit uh, it doesn't always have to be in sequence but this one is uh, just to give an example of how you do that um, I'm going to do a little tutorial for this uh, this little fella, this bit of kit, because it's uh, pretty sweet. So uh, I'll definitely do that. It's, it's quite simple. For the old secret door. So uh, yeah, that is combining logic gates.